I wish I could tell you the first season of The Outer Limits ends with a bang. But I can't. Let's get to it, shall we? You should see me in a tank top. Are you copy? <laughs> The Outer Limits. Our story begins halfway through a Hitchcock movie, where two women, including one played by Vera Miles, conspire to murder Andre, a rich, psycho playboy with blackmail on his mind. He makes the two women mix him a martini, and then serve it to him in the middle of a shallow lake. Unbeknownst to him, however, the pair have poisoned his drink with a leaf from the deadly Thanatos plant, so he dies where he stands after drinking it. When his body doesn't sink to the bottom, I don't know why they seem to think it would, Kasha, Vera Miles' character, explains to the other woman, Leonora, that they'll have to put his body in the trunk of their car and find a place to dispose of it. Though Kasha is cool as a cucumber about the whole thing, Leonora is freaking out and when the trunk of the car pops open while they drive away, she is convinced Andre is still alive and kicking. The two women check on the body, which is still there and still dead, and Leonora thinks she sees it move and runs off in full-on panic mode, leaving Kasha to exasperatedly chase after her. In true The Outer Limits fashion, Leonora's run through the forest leads her to a strange house, and then the Hitchcock comparisons get even stronger when Sir Cedric Hardwick answers the door and does his best impersonation of old Alfred. I wonder if others can see your beauty as I do. Hardwick, whose character's name is Colas, is the blind owner of the house and allows the two women in from the storm to warm up and get their bearings. When they ask about the incessant sound of ticking clocks coming from upstairs, Cullis mentions they belong to someone named Hobart, who arrives on cue. Leonora, thinking the man is a resurrected Andre, faints in horror, but awakens moments later with Kasha caring for her and Cullis and Hobart nearby. Hobart asks if they're going to stay the night, and Kasha says they will. Then Hobart tries to reassure the still-shell-shocked Leonora with kindness, only for Kasha to treat him rudely by telling him good night. He returns the rudeness by asking he not be disturbed in any way as he and Colas leave the room. Upstairs, we see Hobart go into a room filled with lights, strings, and innumerable clocks, along with the body of Andre. Leonora continues acting like a lunatic, while Kasha decides to take the fireplace tools and bury Andre by herself. She's a woman of action, that Kasha. Hobart catches her leaving the house with the fireplace tools, but doesn't ask any questions as he helps her on her way. He then visits Leonora, who, in a dreamlike haze, tells him everything. Hobart then talks some mumbo-jumbo about tilting time to explain that he can bring Andre back to life. He takes her upstairs to show her, but Andre's body is missing, revealed moments later to still be in the trunk of the car as Kasha prepares to bury it. Leonora screams and passes out again. When Kasha hears the scream, she abandons her work and heads back to the house to check on her. Meanwhile, Hobart concludes that Andre must be alive as nobody else could have taken the body away. He runs out of the house to find him, just as Kasha returns. She meets up with Leonora again, and Colas tells the pair they should probably leave, revealing that he knows all about Andre. Leonora tries to tell Kasha that Hobart can tilt time, and Colas backs up her story, explaining that Hobart himself had come back from the dead a year earlier. Kasha has had enough of all this nonsense, and wants to leave with Leonora and finish burying Andre. But just as they open the front door, who should they meet? But Andre himself, of course. Refill, please. Colas leaves to find Hobart, who, after nearly being run over by the resurrected Andre, has realized it was a mistake to bring the giggling psychopath back to life. He resolves to correct his mistake and returns to the house. Meanwhile, Andre, surprisingly unfazed by the whole being murdered thing, tries to convince Kasha that they should continue with their blackmailing con of Leonora and her father as planned, but Kasha responds with some of the most overwritten dialogue I've ever heard. You can't be born in the sewers of a noisy world and grow up to be anything other than a 
noisy, sewer-minded man. Hobart arrives and points a gun at Andre, but then gets so distracted by a toy on the table that Andre is able to easily disarm him. I got nothing. Andre then leaves with Kasha, but on the road, Kasha jumps out of the car and rolls aside when Andre tries to run her over. He crashes the car and dies. Again. Back at the house, Hobart plans to go back into his machine and return to the past where he is dead, but on the way, he finds Leonora, passed out yet again on the floor in one of the side rooms. You know, maybe she's just a narcoleptic. Hobart then very briefly tells Leonora his backstory, before asking her to destroy the device after he uses it. Kasha returns just in time to see Hobart vanish into thin air, and then the episode ends. I'm very conflicted. On one hand, this is a wonky and confusing episode with a plot that only barely makes sense, dialogue that no human being could ever pull off well. I have planes, boats, and villas and jewels. All the cacophonies with which beggar boys drown out the groan of insecurity. I've intruded upon your reverie. Forgive me. I only came in to see if you were comfortable. And characters that are either one-dimensional archetypes or muddled plot devices that don't act in a coherent manner. On the other hand, the cinematography is great, the Hitchcockian atmosphere is perfectly executed, and the actors all do phenomenal work with what they've been given. I should note that this is Cedric Hardwick's last role before his death, shortly after the episode aired. But it's not just him. David McCollum, Scott Marlowe, Vera Miles, and Barbara Rush are all excellent, giving this episode far more talent than it probably deserves. I wouldn't say it's a bad episode, but it's not a proper high note for the season to end on. And that's all I have on the Forms of Things Unknown. I will be back next week to talk about my thoughts on the whole season, but until then, do all those youtube things, check out my Patreon, and all that other good stuff. Um, until next time, though, this is the Unapologetic Geek telling you to never be ashamed of what you love. As long as you're not hurting anybody. I was trying to explain to him how he'd been dead and how I had brought him back to life. He was amused. He wasn't terribly interested.